when I was looking into you, I, you know, it said you're a performance philosopher and futurist. Don't and you I, love that title? <laughs> I'll just, just go with it. That for a minute? Timothy Leary said, in the information age, you don't teach philosophy, you perform it. If Aristotle were alive today, he'd have a talk show. And that was in the 80s. So I'd remix that. i see, like, if Aristotle were alive today, he'd have a YouTube channel and he'd be spitting his philosophical riffs onto his YouTube page. But anyway, that was where that line came from. This idea that you don't teach philosophy, you perform it. If you're interested in ideas, you got to think out loud. you got to communicate them linguistically. So I, what I've been doing is I've been finding all these references from these, like, intellects that I respect that describe kind of what I do. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, this kind of sounds like what I do. And this kind of sounds like what I do. Maybe I'll kind of, like, co-op these descriptions and use them to describe my work. Jason, talk to us about your philosophy and why ideas matter. An idea is the most resilient thing in the world. It can be planted in a brain and transform humanity. So where do ideas live? I mean, besides living in our brains, how do they travel? And I think that nowadays in the age of information, right, they're information files, they're binary bits, so they're ones and zeros. So today we make content, we make media. I mean, Gene Youngblood, who wrote a seminal book called Expanded Cinema, says that cinema reflects mankind's historical drive to manifest his consciousness outside of his mind and of his eyes so content media cinema is a mirror we hold up to ourselves it's a it's a these, these information files these pieces of content that we create and send out into the world to create ripples are real things that infect brains they travel through fiber optic cables and transcend the limitations of space of time of distance you know media represents our electrified thoughts traveling at the speed of light so that's how we make ideas spread i believe by creating content like this by creating forums like idea pod ideas are the seed you know they're like they're like a piece of nanotechnology you know when you look at a seed a seed is just nature's nanotechnology that works. A seed is an information file that tells the soil around it to sort of self-organize and become whatever that seed is instructing it to become, whether it's a mango tree or whatever it may be. Think of ideas as, as fire, right? If you, if you rain fire in, if you domesticate the chaos that is fire and organize it, it can become the engine in your you know, in your aircraft and help you tra travel across the sky. So it's all about how do we hone in and focus and, and refine these ideas so that the best ones are the ones that end up, you know, powering humanity to soar above all of the limitations that currently um, hold us back. The, the world that we live in today would not be possible if somebody didn't have the courage to imagine something new. I love this notion of the adjacent possible. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term, but the adjacent possible is sort of, it talks about exploring the perimeters of possibility. So don't see the world as it is, see the world as what it could be. You know, have a, take that cognitive leap, come up with an original vision. The adjacent possible is described by Stephen Johnson as a shadow future that hovers over the present state of things. A map, essentially, of all the ways the present can reinvent itself. And I think that's a, a sort of almost a state of consciousness that we can adapt. You know, let's live our adjacent possible. Let's live the adjacent possible. Let's go through the world and not be blinded by what we see, but instead conjure up possibilities. Technology is an extension of us, right? Technology is us. Technology is mind out in the world. We take in matter of low organization, we put it through the filters of our brains, and we extrude smartphones and social media and networks. So increasingly, the more intelligent our tools become, the, the sort of so-called distinction between man and tool will completely disappear. And we'll start seeing that the man-made world is all a space where ideas traffic and live. I mean, look at New York City. <laughs> that's an idea embodied. That's an idea given form. I mean, that's what human beings do. We, we pull the present forward to meet our visions of the future. We conjure up something in our imagination, virtual models, and then in combination with our opposable thumb, we bring that vision, that virtual model into being. That seems to be the feedback loop, you know? The ideas, they build on top of each other, right? So everything I might have like a simple beginning and then it can sort of, its complexity can grow. Somebody once had the idea, man can fly. 
And then somebody had the idea, sure, let's build a craft with wings. And then somebody was like, yeah, we could harness the properties of, of, of the wind and flight and so on and so forth. And, you know, the ideas build, but they all start with sort of a simple desire. What do you want to do? How do you want to transform the world? When you wake up in the morning and you think, what can I come up with? What is a, a unique vision that I can contribute to humanity that starts simple and that can grow? Our thoughts shape our spaces and our spaces return the favor, right? So we, we, we create this world and then that world engages in a feedback loop with us and further informs our thought. And that self-amplifying feedback loop is what leads to sort of future evolution. Cultural evolution is the space that we really care about and creating fertile spaces where ideas can intermingle, where they can mutate, where they can fuse, where they can essentially have sex. And these are the spaces of innovation that people like Stephen Johnson write about in his book Where Good Ideas Come From, for example. Um, so I think anytime that you can that you can uh, maximize the spaces in which ideas can come together and collide and intermingle, you are participating almost in an evolutionary process, an acceleration of new possibilities, maximizing possibilities in every direction. I think it's important for ideas to spread for the same reason that it's important for our genes to spread. You know, going back to that metaphor of trading in genes versus trading in memes, you know, ideas are memes. They're the new replicators. So evolutionary success when it comes to our genes used to mean to spread our genes widely, right? Mate spread ourselves that's evolutionary success mark your territory so to speak i mean it sounds crude but that's human beings are designed to replicate but now that we're trading in memes we're trading in ideas it, it follows the same principle in order to achieve evolutionary success an idea needs to spread widely it needs to reach a cultural inflection point so to speak and i see so for that reason you want ideas to scale you want them to spread because the idea that spreads the widest wins the idea that hits critical mass is the idea that informs and shapes the world. It becomes the dominant cultural operating system. I mean, our reality is made of language. Our reality is sculpted by the cultural operating system, by the ideas and values that sort of inform our everyday. So the world is made of language. So choose your words wisely, I say to people, because obviously it's all constructed um, um, out of ideas. Don't stop searching until you find it, because that, that should be your guiding principle, you know? Find uh, an idea, find a vision that just moves you to your core, you know? Camus used to say life should be lived to the point of tears. So find that thing that brings you to tears. Find that beautific vision, that truth, that moment of aha, and chase it, and when you find it, run with it.